help me from a mental level break things down and then build it back up. And I always love that. And that's what I do with people now is like get back to the essence and the simplicity, the, the body's natural and innate wisdom and find ways to facilitate that and create environments, community and proximity that supports that. Because like the biggest thing I found is like if you want a flower to blossom and bloom in the way that nature intended, just like the human body, um, you don't need to fix a person. You just need to, you need to create an environment that supports that. The pandemic is not an environment that supports that. Isolation, disconnection, financial stress is mm. literally the factors for everything that is going to break up relationships, finances. 95% of relationships break up because of finances. And it's got nothing to do with money. It's about the safety, the security, the deep hidden insecurities that come up with those clashes and things. And, uh, and then the isolation and disconnection, like connection is the key to longevity. Look at the blue zone communities, these places where they live forever. Like that's the number one thing in the strength of your social relationships. And it's really beautiful to see all my friends finding that in the pandemic and finding their own happiness, um, even though they feel and we're forced to be isolated because of these rules and regulations that don't make sense. And isolation is the worst thing for mental health. The reason why a lot of people are going through this mental health issue is because you, you're stuck with your thoughts. And you know, the, happy, the, the wisest person and the happiest person is someone that can sit in a, a room alone and, and, you know, be happy with who they are. And at the moment, I think a lot of people are having those realizations and things are coming up and they're trying to suppress it rather than, you know, seeing the storm and, and finding that the lesson of the pain is in the pain. And on the deeper side, on the other side of that storm is a deeper connection with yourself and others. But w- what we resist persists, you know, so it's easier to run and chase smoother waters than it is to, um, than it is to like batten down the hatches and, and build that resilience and, and really take on the human experience and get the lessons because um, like I even had a spiritual mentor pop into my life in the last two weeks and she's like, it'll well, start with a whisper and then it'll start with a little tap on the shoulder and then it'll be a thud. And most of us are getting that, that tap on the shoulder with a thud right now. And, um, you know, it's a really good book by Ching, The Book of Changes, um, which talks about, you know, life is like seasons, you know, you got winter. I think a lot of us are in winter and scarcity now. Yeah. But just know that like summer, autumn, winter, winter, um, summer, summer, autumn, summer, autumn, spring, winter is coming. And, you know, even like flowers, I use that analogy. It's like a, a sunflower grows and then, it, and then it dies and creates a new shoot. It's just this natural cycle of life. And every seven, seven years, we have those cycles. We've got to, every cell in our body is basically replaced except for, you know, our eyes, our teeth and, and our brain. But even then there's neuroplasticity and adaptation and we've got innovation and things. So it's like our potential is, is absolutely amazing, you know? And um, I guess the, the next little bit is 